is the perfect RIA In case you didn't know Bringing you all the strategies To help your business grow Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? Sit back and listen in While you feel the beat, yeah Another myth bites the dust Hello, TPR Nation. This is Amber Kim from The Perfect REA. Thank you for joining me on today's Follow-Up Friday, where I'll be covering the highlights and action items from this week's episodes. On Monday's episode, Matt and Micah discuss growth and the concept that 10xing is easier than 2xing. And I'll sometimes, as an advisor, you think you're growing, but you're just on autopilot. And that either your goals aren't ambitious enough, or maybe they're too ambitious. Micah talked about how earlier in his career, he thought he had a passion and was visualizing his growth, but he wasn't working or doing the things he needed to do to move that needle. He realized the important thing was doing activities that delivered massive value. Matt brought up how you can fall into this trap of seeing shiny things and you forget the endless reps that go into being good at something. For example, doing webinars and seminars. You need to do the reps that lead up to that. You have to have realistic expectations. Micah brought up a question, which was, if you can see the path to the goal, then is the goal not big enough? While having an aspirational goal is great, such as the example that Matt shared about Elon Musk and his goal to colonize Mars, he said you need to have milestone goals to get there. The guys expanded on this idea because they said if you don't know what you're doing the next year, the next quarter, or even the next day, then you're doing it wrong. You can have a big goal, but you have to break that down into smaller steps. And that's got to boil down to what you need to do every single week to progress towards that goal. For example, Micah's goal is to help 1 million federal employees retire. So he's starting to break that down into piece by piece. Matt Micah also discussed a few traps that advisors can get into related to their goals and growth, such as spending money as if you're already at your goal or hiring a junior advisor before you should. Micah said that nine times out of 10, you're not overworked. You just don't have good policies and procedures to where people know how to do them, or you don't have solid leadership streamlining what your team should be doing. Now, on this idea of hiring, Matt did share that you should hire an assistant as quick as you can so you can spend more time being an advisor and less on the admin, and then wait a long time before you hire that next person, especially a junior advisor. He brought up this thought that there's a silver bullet to your growth, but that silver bullets just don't work. Going back to the aspirational goals, Matt is a fan of those. However, he said you can want something really bad and still do the same things you were doing before. He talked about how he wanted things badly earlier in his career, and yet he continued to do the same things. So if you want a different outcome, you have to do something different. Micah talked about perfecting your craft and that in order to 10x, you have to do things differently and you need to look at this from a quality standpoint. He said doing the better quality is harder and you have to get uncomfortable. So then he asked, if you're going to push yourself into that level of discomfort, is growth really worth it? Matt believes that answer depends on where you are in your career. For him and his peer group, it's about what journey do they want to be on? One where he's growing and improving? or one where he's doing the least he possibly can. He said, when you're doing the least that you can, it will always end in destruction. So you need to think about what you need to get better at. And also, what are you willing to stop doing that's sabotaging you? What are things that you're going to stop doing so that you can continue on that path of success? Matt and Micah discussed the importance of personal and professional development and why you need to learn from those who are doing an excellent job in order to make yourself better. But they admitted that it's easy to say to spend time with advisors who are crushing it, but it's hard to find those advisors, which is why Matt and Micah created the perfect REA, to have this environment where advisors could learn from each other on what really works and what doesn't work. They said you need to be continually improving. If you're not putting that money aside, then it's easy to say that you can't afford to attend a conference or learn to grow. And you've got to decide what behavior you're going to do differently. It's also easy to get caught up in that should space, which brings about guilt and shame, but there's no power there. The power comes from what you're going to choose to do. The guys wrapped up the episode by talking about throughout all of your goal planning and growth that you need to also understand the why behind that goal and that if you don't have a big enough reason for that why, then you'll likely give up. And to remember that this is all about delivering massive value. So the better you are, the more focused that you are, the more reps you put in, the more personal development you have, 
the more value you're going to deliver your clients and that there is no cap on value to clients. Let's get into action items from Monday's episode. Think about what experience your clients have when they walk into your office and how you can up that experience. And what is it that you're going to do differently to 10x your practice? And we'd love for you to share that with us on social media. Create a personal development budget. It's got to be a use it or lose it one. And the guys recommend setting aside 5% of your gross. Just put it into a separate account and start using it. Matt's book, Delivering Massive Value, is available, as is the bonus content. Visit theperfectra.com slash book to place your order. And lastly, be sure to sign up for our next power session on March 29th. Matt and Michael will be focusing on the one big mistake advisors make. Save your spot today by visiting theperfectra.com. On this week's What Works Wednesday, Matt was joined by Brian Sweet from Sweet Financial Partners, who he met at the Genius Network with Joe Polish. Brian shared his background and that he's going into his 44th year in the industry. He lives in a small town in Minnesota, and he works with 1,100 households. He talked about how he's had a lot of great mentors over the years, and so in turn, he's enjoyed helping other advisors get to the level he's at and become more efficient and effective. Matt asked Brian about what are some of the consistent breakthroughs that he's seen people make and making a real change in their practice. The first thing Brian talked about was that people tend to not hire fast enough and they try to do everything themselves. He said, once you figure out that you can spend your time doing what you're good at and hire someone to do all the things that you don't like or aren't good at, the faster you figure that out, the better. He also talked about learning to take action, that things don't need to be perfect. And by just getting out there and doing something, you're moving forward. Brian said it's all about a lifetime and building something and that you're never going to get there tomorrow, but you can make little bits of progress each day. He talked about how advisors get disappointed that they had a goal and they didn't hit it instead of looking at where you started and what you accomplished. And that by doing that, you're going to be amazed at how much progress you actually made. He said you also need to keep a positive mindset and surround yourself with people that can keep you motivated. Matt asked Brian about his thoughts on having a firm in a small town. For Brian, he said being in a small town is an advantage. He said, if you're really conscious of what you do and what you say, good news travels fast, but also bad news travels fast. And to always keep in mind that no matter what the situation is, just do what's in the best interest of the client, even if there's nothing in it for you, because it will always come back tenfold. He said, you need to play the long game. Matt and Brian talked about teams, investing in your team and celebrating wins. Brian said that he's found that a great employee probably does three times what a good employee does. And the more you help your team, the better they'll be able to help the client. Matt and Brian also talked about having this abundance mindset. Brian said he's been a lifetime learner. And he said that when you can be around people who think differently or think with that abundance mentality and you spend a couple of days with them, you can't help but get excited and you'll look at life differently. He said, you need to pump your brain with the thoughts you want to accomplish. If you're receptive and willing to take action, amazing things will happen. Let's get into action items from Wednesday's episode. When you go to a meeting, make sure that you're bringing the person that will help you implement things along with you. And then look around and figure out who are the five people that you're spending the most time with. If they're not enhancing your life or motivating you, you might need to make a change. You want to spend time with people who have bigger ambitions. On this week's Worlds to Conquer, Jamie went into discussing all things to next in your practice. How do you achieve the level of greatness that you want to achieve and that get you to where you want to go? You have to start small and come up with systems, policies, and procedures. Jamie said you need to make sure that you're taking things out of your head and documenting them so that others can handle some of those tasks, that you'll never be able to deliver massive value to your clients, spend more time out of the office, or have the level of growth that you need and want if you've set yourself up to be needed for everything. Jamie said you want to invest in technology and things that are going to make your life easier. So for her, when she's in her office, it's intentional time and everything is designed for her to be hyper-focused. So what does your office look like? Is it cluttered or distracting to where you're playing office instead of being hyper-focused? What about the client experience? What is that experience that you're giving the client? Jamie talked about how during her virtual meetings, she's standing at her desk because it's a different energy level and she wants her clients to see that she's interactive. What systems are you putting into place to set yourself up for success? 
Jamie knows what her processes will be, not just for her, but for everyone in the office. She said, you need to look at how you're running your surge appointments. In addition to the reincarnated thoughts that Jamie mentioned last week, you need to look at what's going to happen next. She said a lot of value is delivered in the conference room, but it's also heightened once a client leaves a meeting because their office is proactive about the things that they're doing and what the client needs to do. Jamie shared an important reminder, which is that work will take the time you allow it. So you need to share deadlines with your clients and keep that deadline consistent throughout your office. So what are your policies? What are your process? Not just something you think that's in place. Reminder, Jamie said that success is doing something consistently that others only do occasionally. Jamie said if you have something in your head on how it should be or how you think it's done, it's not good enough. You need a written policy and procedure. And you need to articulate what your expectations are and empower your team. Jamie then talked about the four times in a person's life that they will implement change. First, after they've been hurt by something. So what's hurting your practice? Look at what those pain points are. Second, when they see an example and get inspired. Third, when we learn about something. She said learning something new is a powerful instrument for change because it can expand your mind. And then fourth, when they have the ability to change. So start today with the smallest thing that you can do to start implementing change. Let's get into action items from Thursday's episode. Get a sheet of paper or put this on the whiteboard. Write out four columns and list out the following. First, hurt. What are the pain points that you're dealing with? Second, C. Who is doing what you want in your own life and who can you look to for guidance? Third, learn. What are you going to learn about in the next 90 days that will radically 10 extra practice? And fourth, ability. What are you able to do now to start that change? TPR Nation, before I wrap up, I want to remind you about our upcoming Nation Power Session at the end of this month on March 29th. Matt and Michael will be talking about the one big mistake advisors make. Be sure to get signed up today by visiting theperfectre.com or you can email us at lifestyletheperfectre.com. That wraps up this week's recap. Thank you for joining me on today's follow-up Friday. And be sure to give us five stars wherever you're enjoying this podcast and share this or any of our episodes with another advisor or a team member who you think might benefit from listening. And until next time, happy planning. Hold on before we go. Something that you need to know This isn't tax, legal, or investment advice That isn't our intent Information designed to change lives Financial planning can make you thrive Start today, don't think twice Be a better husband, father, mother, and